Hello, my name is Andrew Schoenberg, and this is a patho box and patho pan demonstration. The first patho box part is this clamp. It has a table, the clamp. It also has these two bolts and two nuts, and that adjusts the tension so this can be a clamp inside the patho box. And this is this clamp goes inside the patho box here, and this is going to be a clamp that attaches your camera, your smartphone camera, to your microscope. So you can take videos and pictures and so on. And so it comes together like this. Now remember the nuts, if you can see that, the nuts are on the inside of the box. They're not on the outside of the box, the nuts are on the inside of the box. And that allows the nuts to push it down against this wall of the eye box and push this clamp up into your microscope eyepiece to secure a nice uh, solid fit. So that's the eye box. Um, and we can put that on a microscope. So this is a toy microscope here that has some eyepieces here. And we're going to just put this right on top of the microscope. So you want the eyepieces to be on either end of the inside of the patho box. And that should be pretty tight already. It shouldn't fall off. But we want this clamp to be really tight. So we're going to go and adjust those screws, adjust those nuts rather, and we're going to get that nice and tight right up against each eyepiece. So it's snug. You don't want to do it too tight because this is just plastic. You don't want to break the box or break the nuts or the screws. But it should be tight, you know, in the sense that, you know, it's not going anywhere. You don't want your phone to fall off, of course, so you want it to be tight. This table is going to support your phone and it's adjustable. So depending on the size of your phone, you might want a table working like that. You might want it, you know, further down, which is how, you know, an iPad might fit on here. But it's adjustable, and so you need to find a good height for your phone. Now I'm going to try that, and I'm also going to put on this guard here. And this guard works kind of like a hand. So this will slide in to the side here. And that just prevents your phone from sliding off that way, right? So if you drop your phone, it'll go in the guard, and it's not going anywhere, right? Because the guard, you can tip it forward, it's not going anywhere. The arm on this guard, uh, I give uh, multiple guards. Some are longer than others, and that depends on the size of your phone. So you'll want to use a longer guard for a larger phone. I'm using the smallest one because my Android phone here is pretty small. You also want to use these risers to get the height correct. So we want to align the camera on our phone to the light that comes out of the microscope eyepiece. And to do that alignment vertically, we need these risers here. So this riser will slide in here, and then this thin riser goes inside that first riser because everything's trapezoidal. Uh, these are trapezoidal channels, and they all fit together like Legos. And then we have this, this sort of assemblage here of uh, a patho box. And again, it's not really going anywhere. It's pretty solid on the microscope. And then we'll turn the microscope on. We'll see a little bit of light coming out. And we'll see that the, that the stage here is getting lit up, and that's good. And so then I'm going to log into my phone here, and I'll use my phone's camera function to start taking pictures. Or at least align the phone to the light that's coming out of the microscope. Um, so you'll kind of get a feel for this as you get more and more practiced. Um, it takes a little bit of adjustment, but um, you want to you want to get this to set just right, so you can take lots and lots of pictures, um, and it should be uh, reproducible. So I'm just getting it in focus now, and that's in focus. So if you can see that, it's probably hard to see, isn't it? Um, that is. Uh, what it looks like when you can take photos uh, with your with your phone. Probably can't see the photos very well right now, but I'm uh, using the phone to look uh, around right on this slide. And I'm just using both my hands here to control the slide. 
and my phone is voice activated. So when I say a keyword, it will take pictures for me. And this is important. So when I say cheese, you'll see that flash on my phone. That means it took a picture. And that's, that's important because I don't want to bump my phone too much. Cheese, you'll see that flash again. Cheese, it'll take some time. It'll have to focus itself. Cheese, um, but it's an important feature on your phone. Cheese, to be able to take lots of pictures. Cheese, and put all the pictures together later with Pathopan. Cheese, into a whole slide image. So I'm just taking a number of these photos here. Cheese, I guess I could say other words as well, but you get the idea, right? We're just going to walk through this slide. Cheese, and take a lot of pictures and then later we're going to put these all together cheese with patho pan and we're going to try to make an approximate whole slide image here so I'm going to get my laptop and I'm going to get those photos off my camera so to do this I'm going to attach my phone here to my laptop to pull the pictures off I'm just doing this because it's a larger screen this way. Um, and you won't need the microscope anymore. Um, and let's see what we have. So you can see it's just my phone here. I'm not doing any tricks. And my laptop here. Maybe you can see my laptop a little better this way. And we're going to look for the photos on my phone. So I'm just connected with my laptop here, and I'm going to select all those photos. I'm going to copy them over to my laptop into this demo directory here on my hard drive. I'll paste all those in, and that's going to take a little bit of time. And then I'm going to go to pathophotology.org slash pathopan. You may or may not be able to see that very well. And then I'm going to click Browse. Then I'll click Browse to select the very first picture that we've taken. It's important to do that and see that green bar complete, just to know that everything's OK. Then I'll go ahead and upload several more of the photos. And later on, I'll upload all the photos. But just to show you one at a time, we see the raw photo and some pre-processing and post-processing that happens to this image. Uh, this will all take some time. I'm speeding along here. The server is actually slower than this. Uh, and you can see the photos merged now. So if you have a lot of patience and you merge all these photos that we took uh, with the smartphone, with Pathobox, and merge them all this way with Pathopan, you would see this. Uh, it takes some patience. It's quite slow, but you can do this for free. So now we want to click and save that last post-processed image. And I'm going to save it as post, the post.png file. And we're going to um, open that then in some program to let us edit photos. You might use Photoshop. I use the GNU image manipulation program or GIMP. It's free software. It works on Windows, Linux, and Mac. And I'd like to show you how GIMP can be used to edit or clean up this whole slide image, the full quality whole slide image that we've taken. Now, we'll want to rotate this image to make it fit a little bit better, make it a little bit more cleanly rectangular. And a rotation like that seems, uh, seems reasonable to me. I'll go ahead and click Rotate here in GIMP to make that rotation. And then I'll use the crop tool to uh, crop the photo. Uh, I'll try to be careful here to select a crop that keeps all the tissue of interest. And I won't worry so much about the checkerboard transparency or the black background here. We're going to clean that up too using the eyedropper tool to select some background color and fill that in with background, like a white background color. 
So we'll use the eyedropper tool to uh, select that uh, background grayish color, and then we'll fill in gray to make it to make it appear that there's more uh, complete background there. I'll just use the eyedropper to select a background color that's around the area, some shade of gray that's around there. And then I'll use the fill tool, the paint bucket tool to finish that up. You might see a black seam there, that's okay. I'll now adjust uh, the brightness and contrast. It's a little bit off screen here, but I like to adjust the contrast a little bit to, uh, if you see that the image is getting a little bit higher contrast, the whites are whiter, the shadows are darker. Uh, it just makes it a little bit more visually pleasing to see. Uh, you can do other kinds of manipulations with GIMP, but when you're done, we'll want to export this as some other file. Perhaps post-edit.png is a good a file name as any. I'll not save some extra metadata. It's not really that important, but I like to not save extra metadata. And we'll export that, post-edit.png. And now we'll tweet that. So these are whole slide images that are small enough for us to share directly on Twitter. So we're going to show that we can do that. So this is a cross section of esophagus. It's ear, nose, throat pathology. And this is a smartphone based uh, low quality whole slide image uh, that we used Pathopan uh, to generate. Right, that looks like a reasonable tweet. And now we'll select our image, our whole slide image that we got from Pathopan. Again, it's it's not perfect. It's you know it has shadows and seams and other problems as a whole slide image goes, but it's something we can tweet. Uh, so we did.